especially vegetarian women, because if they breastfeed, they're going to have big problems. Um, advanced liver disease, because they can't convert the B12 over to the active form. Then there's other rare things, inborn errors of B12 metabolism, transcobalamin 2 deficiency, and then nitrous oxide. So those are probably, I gave you 10, 11 different causes. So it's not like, you know, one simple thing. What's next for you this year? Oh, let's see. This year, I do have one thing. I'm doing a, the Wise Tradition from the Weston Price Foundation has asked me to do, to give a, a lecture, an hour lecture at their annual convention. That will be in November. Wonderful. And what we're hoping for is 2012 is going to be the year of B12 awareness where we're really going to try to educate as many you know, people as possible regarding this. And we do have a B12 awareness, and our mission statement is to unmask the epidemic of undiagnosed B12 deficiency through education and advocacy. And our goals, we want to promote early diagnosis and treatment to prevent neurologic injury, disability, poor outcomes, and premature death to educate society on the role B12 deficiency plays in overall health, cognitive decline, and fall-related trauma. And we're trying to enlist the help from the media, Congress, governmental agencies to expose and eliminate billions of wasted health care dollars. And we want to protect the public and save lives, promote further research, and Actively, we're working with other countries to create Worldwide B12 Awareness Day. And we have, we have declared September as B12 Awareness Month for the United States. I love it. Right. We're trying to get Congress. I've written to the Surgeon General. We, we believe this is such an important issue. I mean, first and foremost, it's injuring the public. And we are. I mean, as an ER nurse, I'm telling you this, I see B12 deficiency daily walking in, and I have... I do have some physicians that I work with that will test people, and that's how I know the incidence of, of this. We want the Surgeon General to make B12 deficiency a call for action. I know they're working on obesity for the nation and children, and that's important. But when you look at what B12 deficiency does to all ages and the amount of money we are wasting and spending, it's criminal. And, and you know this, the, the, the beauty of it is, there's a solution, and it's cheap, and we will, we will really benefit society and our offspring and our elderly. We need to be advocates for our elders out there. And I, in, in my opinion, this to me is elder abuse. I can walk into any assisted living center, any nursing home, and find you a B12 deficient patient. Absolutely. The few years that I spent even at one of the best elderly care facilities for Alzheimer's patients, it was clear. Even the food that they eat right. isn't translating into regular stores of vitamin B12 and the other vitamins that they need. But for sure, I could see that. Well, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. And I love your enthusiasm and your passion. I also appreciate your optimism where you could be very negative and you could be very devastated about your findings. I love your passion and the way you're stewarding your discovery. And I want to thank you for being on the show, Sally. And I also want to thank your husband, Jeffrey, for co-writing the book with you and for you both putting yourselves out there. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been talking with, learning from, and listening to Sally Patchlock. And you should pick up the book, Could It Be? B12, An Epidemic of Misdiagnosis, the Underground Classic that Has Saved Lives. It's in its second edition.